Welcome to Lore Evolution, the show where we explore the production history of our favourite factions, technologies, and characters from the realm of sci-fi and fantasy. Today we're jumping over to the Battlestar Galactica universe once again. Previously we explored the Cylons, but now let's take a look at the 12 colonies of Cobol. The Twelve Colonies of Cobol, or the Twelve Colonies of Mankind as they're called in the original Battlestar Galactica series, were created by Glenn A. Larson. When conceiving the series, he was heavily inspired by the book Chariots of the Gods, beginning with the premise of a show following ancient humans arriving on Earth and birthing the civilization that exists today. In fact, his initial name for the idea which became Battlestar Galactica was Adam's Ark. Not much is seen of the Twelve Colonies in the 1978 series before they are utterly destroyed by the Cylons. But over the course of the show, we can derive some information from various bits of dialogue and certain names for certain things. It has been documented over the years that much of Battlestar Galactica was influenced by Mormonism due to Larson being a Mormon himself. While certain elements were lifted from more ancient Greek mythology, such as the colonies themselves being named after astrological signs, most of the culture of the colonies is closer to Mormonism and many of the stories follow Mormon themes. The tale itself of a people journeying to a new homeland echoes the legends of the Lost Tribes of Israel. The ancestral home of the Twelve Colonies is the planet Kobol, a word extremely close to the name Kolob, which in Mormon theology is the name of the star closest to God. The colonies are even led by the Quorum of Twelve, which is one of the governing bodies of the Church of Latter-day Saints. Marriages are called ceilings in the show, as they are in Mormonism as well. Throughout many episodes, there are many more allusions to Mormonisms and wider Christian myths. As this story was meant to depict the ancestors of the human race, many of the characters from the Twelve Colonies are shown as larger-than-life mythological-like figures. Noble heroes, wise mentors, brave warriors, etc. The Colonials are unequivocally the good guys in this story. From what little we see of the colonies outside of the fleet, the impression we are given as a viewer is that of a paradise, a kind of technological Garden of Eden. It's not surprising then that this paradise is brought down by the Cylons who, as was mentioned in the previous Cylon lore evolution, were originally meant to be reptilian serpentine creatures. The meat of this original story wasn't about the colonies themselves, more about the remnants of this civilization and what they would become. Thus Larson's own religious upbringing was the primary influence behind characterizing these colonies and laying the groundwork for how they could evolve. But of course, like most elements from the original series, these larger plans never came to fruition due to the show's cancellation after its first season. When Battlestar Galactica eventually returned to our screens in the early 2000s, the Twelve Colonies, just like their enemies, changed dramatically. The Twelve Colonies of Cobol in the 2004 reboot series, also known as the United Colonies of Cobol, are strikingly different from their original counterparts. Gone are the mythologized good guys, replaced by a much more grounded and real feeling society, with many dark periods of history plagued by cultural divisions and corruption. The capes and laser pistols are gone, now the colonies more closely resemble our own world with practical, realistic technologies, aside from of course the advanced spaceships and faster than light drives they have. A handful of relics from the Mormon influence remain, but it's Greek mythology which plays a bigger part. In the original show, the implication is that the ancient figures of Apollo, Zeus, and so on are the characters in this series, whereas in the rebooted universe, the colonies worship that same mythology as their state religion, the mythological names of characters being changed to call signs and code names and such. The change in mythological influence possibly played a large role in the depiction of the colonials themselves. Whereas Mormonism and the wider Christian theologies are replete with tales led by paragons of holy virtue, the more ancient Greek and Egyptian myths show flawed, fallible humans often coming into conflict with flawed, fallible gods or other supernatural beings. Making the Colonials themselves the creators of the Cylons was a relevant exploration of artificial intelligence, but also a classic example of hubris. Whereas the original series was more akin to a morality tale of the chosen few eventually birthing a new civilization, the reboot series is a tragedy of mankind's most terrible mistakes haunting it long after the colonies themselves have been destroyed. And as this wonderful video from Spacedock explains, the entire Colonial Cylon 
conflict is explained as being part of a never-ending cycle of the creation of new worlds and new life, which inevitably ends in destruction. Essentially, a driving idea behind this rebooted series is, can humanity ever overcome its flaws and forge a lasting, brighter future? And by exploring these flaws, the show exposes many problems intrinsic within the Twelve Colonies. The role which religion plays in the various governing bodies making laws, the discrimination between different peoples from different planets, the othering of the Cylons themselves, even when they become almost indistinguishable from humans, and so on and so on. In the original series, the challenges which the fleet faced were often external ones, from the Cylons or Count Ibli and the like. But in the reboot show, the fleet is already in a tough enough position, made even harder to get out of by the inherited baggage of centuries of internal strife within the colonies. Thanks to the reboot show having the benefit of four full seasons as well, we are given more opportunities to explore these people and the worlds they came from. The result is something much more layered and nuanced than the heroic good guys of the original series. Following the Battlestar Galactica reboot, we got the prequel show Caprica. This is a show I reviewed relatively recently. While many fans would have expected and preferred a prequel set during the First Cylon War, Caprica was a show which leaned heavy into the Greek tragedy aspect of the universe and thus allowed us to explore the Twelve Colonies as a setting even further. A strength of Caprica was its successful depiction of believably diverse cultures existing within the Twelve Colonies. In the original show, there is little to differentiate the colony world and the people from one another. In the rebooted Battlestar Galactica, that changed, with Sagittarion, Geminon, and Erelon in particular coming up in conversation as being quite distinct. In Caprica, it's the Taurons who are given the most focus, with Tauron characters even using their own language in the form of ancient Greek. Other traditions are shown, such as Tauron tattoos and ceremonial daggers. Through other dialogue and plot points, we even learn of an all-out civil war which took place on Tauron in the show's recent history. Another driving force behind the story of Caprica is the monotheistic religion, followers of which can sometimes turn extremist. This is the same religion the Cylons are seen to follow in Battlestar Galactica, but in Caprica we see it originated in the colonies first. While I'm personally on the fence about this creative choice, it's used as yet another symbol of hubris. The followers of this religion are so determined to grow their numbers, they end up enlisting the Cylons, who, as we all know, end up staging a revolt years later, partly driven by this same religion. Funnily enough, just like the original series, the avenues Caprica was going to explore further were eventually closed off due to the show's cancellation after season one. While I understand those who love and those who hate Caprica, despite my own mixed feelings on it, a strength of the series was the exploration of the Twelve Colonies as a thriving society. Had I watched it at the time, I'm sure I would have looked forward to seeing where else the story might have gone and the other aspects of the Twelve Colonies we might have seen. As it stands though, the Twelve Colonies went from a mythology mythologized, near-utopian civilization of noble heroes doing great deeds, to a nuanced and heavily flawed society which often skewed uncomfortably close to our own world. As I've said in previous BSG-related videos, I think it's pretty cool we as fans have gotten two such different takes on the show and two distinctive, memorable versions of both the Cylons and the Twelve Colonies of Cobol. Petrus Tylus asks, Considering a lot of older sci-fi shows have been considered for a reboot slash continuation, do you think there are any which should be left untouched? Um, yes, I would say most of them. <laughs> I, uh, I understand why new Star Trek shows are getting made, for example, as there's still lots of places for that franchise to go, but most of the others kind of said everything they were going to say and then finished. I know I've previously discussed my thoughts on a Babylon 5 reboot, and even a video I'm releasing later this month concerns a Stargate reboot, but ultimately, we should be making more new original shows. Part of what made the golden age of sci-fi TV, as I've referred to it, uh, so good was that there were loads of great original shows right alongside the established franchises, and I wish there were more new space opera type shows around today. Farscape, Andromeda, Lex, Firefly, none of those need continuations or reboots or remakes or anything like that. What I am in favour of is remastering these shows and making sure they continue to get great releases so that modern audiences can enjoy them if they want. But let's make new stuff. I mean, for example, I've heard about like George Clooney being involved in a Buck Rogers reboot or something like that, and it's like... Do we really need a new Buck Rogers show? Just make something else. 
I think if The Orville has proven anything, it's that you can make shows which are very heavily inspired by other franchises and still be successful and entertaining and well-liked. Rather than just resurrecting old, tired franchises, how about we just make a new original show but in a similar style? That way we get to enjoy some classic thrills, but with modern production values, and those new shows won't be constrained by any established characters or settings, and can experiment without a group of fans somewhere absolutely losing their shit. That's my opinion anyway. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members, where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one. And as always, live long and prosper.